What a series we just witnessed. LG Skies keeping their hopes alive here at CWL Champs. Before we get into Splice and Heretics on Alpha, we are going to jump into Bravo, which is Optic Gaming versus Carnage, with Carnage up 1-0 overall on that first hard point. But Ben, you're itching stop. to say something. No, stop. We're one series down, and we're already kicking off day two like this. It's mayhem. Carnage is 1-0 up against Optic Gaming? Yes, sir. Yes. <sighs> All righty then. <laughs> there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a meme that I feel fits this this situation perfectly, but it's words I can't say on stream. So I'm like, oh. Uh, well, thanks for bringing it up. Here we go again. Here we go <laughs> again. Here we go again. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm still not over that round 11. Me either. As bar none, I, the most stressful round I, of search I've ever I, seen. I know, I know we have this up, but I feel like we have to talk about it. I feel like we have to, because we didn't really even have time to dissect it. What was that from UIU? I hate to be that guy. I know it comes down to a 1v1, but there are so many moments that you hey. can look at. Like, so to start the round, right, you have two streaks and you have a war machine, right? I think he got the war machine. Did he not? It, either way. I mean, they they, they didn't kill anybody to start of that round. He, yeah. Unless he so got he it off of a stun okay. or a trophy or something like that, he, they had so the war machine. So you have two streaks, first of all, and then you get the war machine. You know LG's going to play inside. They don't have any other choice. So you use the war machine in lobby, but you don't fully just kind of unleash it, you tap it knowing they have flak jackets, so you don't get anything there. Then you use the first streak. Then it comes down to it a wasted the first streak. The first streak I agree with, wasted. The second streak, all right, fine, you, you at least trade out, but you leave yourself in a 2v1, and then Saints just runs at Skies. He just chowed him. I, I, that was one of the, I, I mean, I just have to say, I have to be honest, I think that Saints played one of the worst rounds I've seen a long time individually. Have, considering yeah. he had a war machine as well. He had a war machine. He was basically in position to win the map for his team. And it's crazy because they came back from down 5-1. Yeah. And when it was 5-4, Phantoms and died with streaks. Like, they... Yeah. Blunders. I and, mean... And then I saw, I saw... Of astronomical proportions. I saw a Scraps tweet out that Methods had nightmares around that jet area in Arsenal. And that's not the first time that he's not had all great right. success there. If you think all the way back to the start of the year. Okay. But even, even that 1v1, like, me and Pac had this discussion as soon as we threw the commercial break. You have to have the biggest cojones in the world not to plant, yes. right? It, it, in six, seven seconds, if you're going to, in a round 11, for your tournament life, if you're going to sit and pre-aim a doorway and not plant, nobody does that. No one in their right mind would Anyone would have the stones to do that. No one. No, unless you made the hardest of hard reads and you know he's going to challenge you with a thousand percent certainty. Even that, as a teammate, I would look at him and be like, what are you, you just threw, like, what, what are you doing? Uh, Look, I, methods. I mean, how many times did he get Sky's one shot trying to plant the bomb? Like, you can address fault to the entire team 18 of different ways, no, 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 but like, of course. No, up to that point, methods played it fine. Right. All the all the shoulder peaks and getting him one shots. Well, I feel like you have. It was to fine. Push. I think once you know he's committing to the bomb, it, even if you don't think you can get to the bomb in time, aggress to a power position on the map. So he has to make a play actually getting off the bomb. Because all Sky's had to do was slide to the slide to his right, and he was safe. Right kind of safe. He got made one shot like 12 times, but <laughs> then the most relatively safer than he should have been in the situation. I just, I can't even let myself like think about it. I can't get past the fact that you have, if you were to design the best case scenario in a round 11 at the start of the round, it, defense. it's having two streaks, it's being on Arsenal, and you have a war machine to watch the only inside lane. You could not pick a better situation to be in. And how many times have we seen this week, where, especially on Arsenal, where like teams have just all the streaks in the world and we're like, hey, there's no way they could screw this up because it never happens in the Pro League. It rarely happens at events, but consistently this champ so far, I don't know if it's just like it's, the ultimate no ice situation. It's being of too like, timid. Okay, so you know, you know they're not outside. Why? Because they can't be. So what do you see <laughs> normally? You see a guy like posted up by the jet shooting into lobby because now they're, they're, they're funneled in. They're funneled in. That's a hard shot from lobby to outside, from, or from inside to the outside jet. It's an easy shot the other way, other way around, and you have a war machine. Those guys are dead. But they're playing so timid because it's champs, yeah. it's round 11, and your whole comms are don't die. That's literally what it is, Yeah, right? don't die, we have streaks. Especially if you're phantoms, because you died the round prior. Right, so now he's picked. not taking any fights. He's, he, so and, he's, and he, <laughs> right. The problem is, he's the guy that plays at jet exactly. every single round defensively for, for that team. So 
his whole game plan at that point, to your point, is to sit at the back of the map. Like, all, all he did was, it was like he was kind of uh, tied to, to a cable. He was just left and right, left and right. Didn't peek, didn't over-challenge. Everyone had the memo not to die, except for Saints, who decided to fight a 1v1 in a 2v1 situation with 10 seconds left, or well, 12 seconds left. Tough. I mean, and then poor Blast just didn't even get to play around because he got team killed. Oh. Uh, yeah, that's that, also uh, we didn't even touch yeah. on that. The team kill that came through with the with the war machine, and he was I think one and an EKA away from from streaks himself. That's one of those moments I wish I could go back and listen to the player comms just to hear what was said after that team kill comes through. If like if they were like nice and calm, I don't think you say anything. Calm, but how much like do that? the rest of them start to panic? Like, does the panic in their voice start to rise? I don't think you say I think in the round 11s, oftentimes like that, the comms are just hectic the entire time. Like, say no, don't do your do do like, especially when you get team killed, you go, oh, oh. But you don't, you don't interrupt the comms because. Oh, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. Like, you just cover your mouth and you're back. just like, I cannot believe this. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe this man here. I ain't never ever seen something like this. <laughs> and then when he fights the 1v1 and loses it, you're like, oh. okay, let's go, Methods. And then when he loses it, oh. you guys just. Uh, Yep. Now right. they got to play against yeah. Singularity. When's, off of that. Uh, when's the next match? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, off play against the Singularity, who just already 3 0 their first series of the day. That that group is a right. horrifying place. I'm, to I'm be. telling you, Cut Champs is just different, man. It's just different. Well, this is the Everything you think you know coming into this event. Like, I, me and Namus had this massive argument, and I said, I don't care who you are, I don't care like how good you've been at accolades wise in your career. Cod Champs produces nerves, and he was adamant it doesn't. And I don't care what you say, that 1v1 proves that it does, because it, it, that entire round proves that it does. Yeah. It, it's it's different. You're playing for something so much more than just the championship. You're playing for a ring, you're playing for a legacy, especially at this Champs as well, more than any other. I mean, who knows what's on the horizon? These players are playing for way more than just a ring and a, a paycheck. They're playing for there's, their future. There's a lot at stake here. There's, There's uh, so much at stake. How your stock is looked at before next season, going into whatever's whatever is ahead. Like, you just there's a lot on the line, and it yep. definitely plays a factor. Well, yeah, people look at this, and this will be the most recent, fresh in their mind opinion of you. Yep. Whatever you do or are unable to do here. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of it, you can win 800 grand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know what? That's a nice little you know cherry cherry on on top of the whole thing. But I feel like Ben, that was that's not the first time we've seen. A, a team have literally everything they could possibly want to be able to close out a round. Oh, no, I, right. I don't know if it was Envy, but there was someone on a control round and they had four sets of streaks and someone had said, you know, everything they needed to win, everything you could ask for, and oh, they lost too. That was, that uh, was uh, yeah. Envy reciprocity. Was yeah. I think, I'm pretty sure. I believe, you, Ben, you might have said, but yeah. well, we've seen it before. You have everything at your disposal and yep. you still just hand it away. I just, I just, to be honest, like, I, I know we've talked a lot about some of the biggest throws so far, but. That was that, monumental. That, that round 11, like I said, Arsenal, Surge, defense, two streaks, both sites outside, a war machine to cover the only inside lane. How do we feel about team kills? Uh, yeah, and a, yeah, and a team kill as well. I didn't think about that. Wow. Yeah, it's, uh, and that was just the first series of the day. Just yeah. the first. <laughs> Get the popcorn out because it's going to be a good day. Probably see that. Yeah. And again, if if you're just tuning in and, and you miss that, LG keeping their hopes alive here at Champs with that 1v1 to end it with UIU to be able to clutch up, UIU falling apart to be able to keep their hopes alive. And we didn't even really mention it on the other side, but for Skies, right? Young player picked up, a lot of pressure on his shoulders, right? You think about, all right, the two new guys come in, you're replacing gunless big shoes to fill. Maybe not necessarily Skies, more so Brack, but either way, he's picked up. He's left in a 1v2 for his entire team's life, just to stay alive, not even to qualify, just to stay alive. He wins the first 1v1 that he had to take against Saints, which admittedly was given to him. But then the composure to stay alive, there was a couple of chances where we were kind of laughing, like maybe he could have taken the gunfight and just killed Methods easier. But still, to stay alive in that situation for a, a player who, let's be honest, a, a rookie player. That's, to zig, to zag. That, How many times was he one shot? A lot, like six. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, just from the final like Dude. 1v1 too, not even the entire yeah. round. Like, Honestly, credit credit to him because he was a player who, when when LG picked up, I was I was high on on, on his horses. If you, will. I said, yeah, I, I think this is a great decision from from LG. I think he's got a, a lot to prove. That's one of those moments where 
You, you earn your paycheck, right? You, you oh, yeah. prove everyone, I'm here for for the big moments. It was a crazy. You moment. kept them from being eliminated. Exactly. You you, you, you stayed alive. So yeah. credit credit to him. And I'm looking. Indeed. To the now we do need to talk about Splice and Heretics. That is our next alpha match coming up. Both of those teams coming off of one and zero records from yesterday. So both having at least one win under their belt. And Splice. I mean, what do you what do you guys think we're going to see from them again? Everyone's talked about the Who Can Temp duo. What it was. What is it going to be now? And the expectations for this team, you know, how far have they come from Miami? Is How much improvement? What are we going to see? Uh, I think they're the most impossible to predict team because they have so much talent, but they don't have the teamwork to go along with it. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to each match, you think Spice could win this match just because you look at their roster and they, this is a team that's in the finals and they just upgraded. They got hook, but their teamwork is not there yet to compete with the top teams. It, it's a weird one as well when you look at head-to-head -head against Heretics because throughout the start of the year, at least, we're in the big moments. Heretics seem to have the better of Splice, but overall in the year, it's actually equal. It's even. It's 2-2 in terms of series, and this one might be the biggest of them all. And the most recent time they played was at Miami, and Splice 3-1 them, and we actually saw this exact same map, Seaside Hardpoint, but okay. it was 2 35 so Splice did wasn't, get the win, but you talk yeah. about a series that kind of came down to the wire. Granted, a game four, not a game five, but that was Heretics. New roster formed. It was only a 15-point game. I'm sure they are very happy to have a second crack at Seaside against Splice. Sure they are indeed, but map one underway. As you said, the Seaside hard point will run it back from the last series. And this uh, an important one, as Katie mentioned, both teams want to know to start their campaigns. And Obviously, you put yourself at 2-0. They're pretty much set, barring a uh, crazy run of results elsewhere in the groups. Yeah, and something I'm very excited to see from the side of Spice just long term is Temp with the SOG back in his hands, right? At the start of the year, he was one of the very few standout players we had at all with the SOG. Yep. That was pre patch Now that it's been adjusted a little bit, there is a handful of SOG players we talk about time and time again. But when that switch happened, we were mainly seeing him with the Maddox. Now we're going to see a lot more SOG Temp action. That is when he's dropping the 9,500 damage per map. It's when he's been at his best. And just to touch on the situations of the group uh, a little bit further in depth, whoever wins this could qualify guaranteed first seed if, and this is a, a very big if, hybrid win over Aspire. So that hybrid Aspire game is actually very important because if, uh, like I said, if hybrid do win over Aspire, whoever wins this will take the number one seed out of the group. It's never uh, a guarantee. There's always never. that possible, yeah, yeah, but whoever wins this series, absolutely in a, a phenomenal position, especially for their final series that they'll have later today. But either way, it is Spice with a very solid lead so far. They're already poised up to get the final 35 seconds. Heretics is debating on the rotation, and they're not even really doing that. They're getting picked apart left and right. Now they're spawning in the back. This has been hardpoint seaside perfection thus far from Splice. And, well, Heretics, they'll be happy to get the final 20 seconds. They will not be happy about how difficult this rotation is going to be. It's not going to be easy at all. Saving grace. There's no streaks, at least, for Splice. There's Looney mid-map, third in checkers. Nice fight, though, from Heretics as they try and fight their way through the checker side. Grapple comes out. Is it enough to force Hoop to be distracted? No, it's not. You still have Looney and Jared at the back of the map. And he spawns. All in favor of Splice. This 40-point lead could get a little out of hand. It was a very measured hold by Splice as well. Again, they didn't want to take any gunfights when the, there was 10 seconds left on the old hill because then you end up spawning out. So even though they lost the first couple, they made sure to play it smart, secure the back spawns, make sure the hill actually pops before you spawn back in. And now they're in a spot where you're spawning so close, it makes holding the hill that much easier. Journey eventually chopped down. Method Sick is around. He's in yellow, but 22 seconds left. Splice again, every single hill. They have come out massively on top. 6 to 22, the lead. Final 15 seconds of Scrapple. Go for Splice. Netflix need to honestly just stop this momentum as best they possibly can. Jared has grab slam already. I'm gonna try and hunt down Method 6 as he wraps all the way through over towards Dark. And Jared knows he doesn't even need to necessarily challenge this. A much better start, but a whiffed grab slam from Jared. A rare one. Just almost bumped his head on the doorway. Didn't allow him to fully go out. Splice are running away with game one. Just hanging out. Maybe they don't even need any of the specialists. The grass line would have been nice, but now Heretics, it comes down to the gunfights, and, well, they've been mincemeat before. Now the trades have come in, jerking. 
or Jordan Hugh with a nice double challenge, but it looks like eventually Heretics are able to wiggle their way in and finally they're able to get maybe a decent bit of time unless Spice wants to fight for it one more time, which it looks like they're setting up for the push. Four men gonna be hitting through the front. Team Kelt is gonna slow things down. Wartex accidentally shoots Journey in the back of the head. 13 seconds of scrap. Wartex is 235 away from streaks though, so your Spice, you gotta be careful you don't necessarily feed him a couple more kills inside the hill, but then they back away. Rotation starts to our second set of hills. Spice ready and waiting on P1. Apple will surely fall. He will. 110 away from streaks now is Vortex. Yeah, Vortex is going to want him. He needs to bait his teammates a little bit, but he's actually a bit of a, a solo man on the hill right here. And Hugh has actually pulled out the Tempest, so you got to make sure you get the shutdown. He not only shuts down the Tempest, but he does connect with the streak. So a couple nice things going their way, but the one negative is, well, Spice is just inside the hill. And they got a nice little setup trying to extend the lead even further. Temp going to use the War Machine as quick as he can. A ton of damage getting put down, but honestly, no kills. That's enough that we made a lot of players absolute one shot and all well, the reinforcements should be there, but it doesn't matter. Heretics take the fights anyway and win them. Sloony wanted one last effort at pushing the hill. He falls. Half an hour rotation pushes out towards barrels. Spice does such a good job of controlling the spawns on P2 here on C7. Blackjack has just come in incredibly handy for Heretics this, uh, you know, past 45 second stretch. Another team kill we've seen come in. This one maybe doesn't make too much of a difference. Actually, though, Heretics, they get that back spawn. Spice leaves it open just a little bit wide enough. And you can see Hugh, well, he makes quick work of those two players coming off spawn. And, well, now it's all about the pressure in towards barrels because Journey gets caught as well. So Splice, a very strong hold. Heretics missed opportunity. And that's actually really unfortunate for Splice because it's Journey spawns in a fraction of a second earlier than Aqua does, and that gives Heretics the spawn. So with 30 seconds left, Heretics will be spawning at the backside. As they try and reduce this deficit, they might be able to get it down to just a 60-point lead. I say just. Still a sizable one for Splice. He's now Splice spawning at the backside. If you're Heretics here, you have to set up nicely. Of course, the one streak er, was also invested there, too. I was going to say the, the streak for the rotation isn't quite there. And the last time around, Spice did a really good job of not taking gunfights until there's a, enough time on the clock to where they don't spawn out. Wartex needs to do the same. The stun's going to slow the players down, makes it nice and easy. He's able to pick up two, and he's going to end up spawning right in the back to be back in the action much quicker than the Spice boys will be there. So Heretics, they're going to need a great hold on this to get right back in the game, and they can absolutely do it. They got all the pressure on the front. Vortex first line of defense and three plays from Spice Fall. Good hold so far from Heretics. But they need, again, a full 60 just to put this close. Spice will still have the lead even if they get the, the remaining 30 seconds. Then you're looking at, well, what specialist can you use in barrels? You have a grab slam, you have a war machine. Vortex is close towards his vision. Journey close to a purifier. Methodic has a tempest. So although you are still down, the map is set up in a way where Heretics could actually take the lead here after another hill. Absolutely, and you're going to have to use the Specialist to try to make it happen. Spice doing a very nice job just to keep all of their pressure towards the front. The Metals can cut it down if he could have gotten the grab slam off, but Temp nice and aggressive was able to pick up two kills before you even get close. But keep in mind, they got a, a War Machine maybe to break or something, but they got to get past Temp. Uh, and that's what Spice is trying to do. They're trying to push out so far that they forced an investment of one of the Specialists, maybe a little early, a little premature. Surely, Heretics don't take the bait just yet. 40 seconds left. Slice inside the hill. Temp defending over from Church, but he feels the pressure. Two players from Heretics going to push over that side. Heretics have to find a way inside this hill quickly because they can tie up this game just by getting control of this hill because then you use a specialist and it's, it's very, very easy at that point. Well, Lucky has the opening. He's actually got the Sog flying forward, but Looney wins a big one-on-one, -on -one, and Looney actually takes down two along the way. Metals again, sitting on the grab slam, is debating on whether he wants to make a play, but at this point, with only 12 seconds left, I think you're just hoping you get the clearance, oh. which he's not really going to be able to. Spice with a, a virtual full 60. And Looney's just played so well on barrels. He's now 110 away from streets. So him on that rotation, keep your eyes out on. That's going to be number seven. His vision pulls pop. That's from Wartex. So Heretic should be able to get a couple of seconds for free. Nothing too much, but Jared also has himself a grab slam. We saw him misplay with the first one earlier on. Very 
rare to see him misplay twice. Metals, of course, still has his grab stun, but Looney is the key player to watch. He's shut down Journey, Lightning Strike, earned. He won't get the Hellstorm. Metals picks damn sure of that. Hook falls as well. Heretic's fighting back. Yeah, Metals picking up a bunch of nice kills. So, Jared, the question is, can he respond with the grab slam of his own? But you got to get to the hill first. He's able to drop Vortex, and he commits, and there is nobody home. Instantly gets cut down by the War Machine. Jared, 0 for 2, and it might be punishing, because Heretic's, well, they at least have the spawns for next. It's a foot race over towards Courtyard. Meanwhile, Lucky was trying to get the scrap time. And this is the rotation Spice have been so good good at throughout map number one is locking down D2. This time, Heretics rotate a little early. Spawn control still in favor of Heretics. They won't have early time, but they don't need to panic just yet. The saving grace, of course, here for Splices. Any damage they do here is massive, considering Looney still has the lightning strike to use on the next rotation over towards Fountain. If it even goes there, Splice can end it here if they feel necessary. Maybe invest absolutely everything. Don't even let heretics have another hill. Well, they get a back spawn, which is nice. The bad problem is the Tempest. It's going to chain two, and Hook finds them both. 20 seconds left. They're making 10, and Splice wins this game. Everybody's spawning in the back, and the Lightning Strike should keep him at bay. And if it's not the Lightning, it might just be Hook. One man tries to fly in, but Hook is there making quick work, and the chain might be in. A bunch of players around for Splice, but everyone else is going to fall and Splice get the first map done and dusted out of the way. A fairly comfortable win. That's something. I mean, what if we see that kind of Splice the rest of this, the, the next four days? I mean, the rest of today, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I mean, it is, it's Heretics, which have been on and off. We've seen them when they're hot. We've seen them when they're cold. For, for me, the problem with Splice has always been do it against the top teams in the game. Right. Yeah. Do, let me see. Let me see. Yes, you did it there, but can you do it here? Like, no disrespect to Heretics. They're, you know, top eight. They're, that's kind of like their, their border for me. I, I don't really expect to see them consistently break into a top five. It's just me being I mean, honest completely. I mean, with what, their roster change, they haven't been. They very won one strong. series. I think it was their first series, and a couple of events was yesterday. They, they were 0 and 6 coming into champ since yeah. they picked up oh, Vortex, exactly. and then they beat one of the open bracket teams. Now they get matched up against Spice, and Spice has already beat them once. So right. it's kind of my expectations for the series. You would expect to see Spice win. What I like to see from that series was uh, Hook was doing really well with the Maddox in that map. He's using a lot more, and I know that was the issue with this new roster is that they kind of have too many SOG players. No one and really wanted to use Jared it. Right? and Kyler or Hook were both uncomfortable with using the Maddox, but it looks like Hook's coming into his own with that. And you can see here, of course, on Bravo again. That's Optic Gaming versus Carnage in the control, uh, tied up one one. Pack, we were able to actually see any of the first game, any of the hard point. From, from from this series, for, or sorry, from the, from the Carnage Optic. Optic one. Were you uh, able to see any of that? No, because that was like... Because it was, was the 1v1, right? That yeah, that was that right, that 1v1. Yeah. So I'm not going to lie to you guys. I have, I just, I'm, My eyes were glued to that 1v1. I, I'm, I'm confused how Optic lost map one. Because, I mean, based off that control, that was a walk in the park. It was a cakewalk. The payload search, yeah. Optic, you know, Optic's pretty walk that bet. Yeah, it's, <laughs> they're better maps for sure. But I'd be really interested to see actually how they lost Map one and whether it was even close. I mean, sometimes, historically, we could say for a lot of the Optic rosters, they do start kind of slow. So that could have been it because they it looks like they've woken up in that series. Just a little. Yeah, yeah just, a, just a bit. <laughs> and, of course, here on Charlie, Aspire and Hybrid. Evil Geniuses, however, on Delta uh, did 3-1 train hard. And EG is now qualified. Uh, 100 Thieves a little bit ago is now qualified. So two more teams uh, continuing onward. I mean, we're up to what, like seven or eight teams that have gotten through. And so, I don't know, about what, eight or nine spots are going to be left. Oh. So, progress is, is trickling in throughout the day. I believe EG also need up to gaming to, to win. If both, to, yeah. Uh, yeah, if both of those win, then Carnage and Trainhard will be eliminated. But you're still reliant on up to gaming actually winning their series. Otherwise, again, there's a whole handful of possibilities for three-way ties. I'd be shocked if I don't pull through and finish that series. Um... With this hybrid and Aspire series, I was watching Map 1 really closely, and we got huge performances out of Fastball and out of um, Turn Up Too Easy. If, honestly, in this season, Fastball and Robbie B have had, like, tumultuous starts. At one point, they were in the league on Accelerate, famously before, you know, Fastball left the team, and Robbie B joined, but now they find themselves in a spot here where if they win this series and win the next one, they can find themselves in the bracket. And of course, on the flip side, like Spoof and Beezy were also players that at least had a brief stint in the league. So Spoof. they're definitely hungry to make the comeback. Spoof qualified for the league. Qualified never, for the league. Yes, never, it did. Never got to play a game.
It's a shame. So That's again, you talk about a player that is hungry and yeah. wants revenge and wants to make it through this lobby is is filled to the brim with those kind of guys. But of course, it's definitely looking like it's all speed way of Aspire. Fastball has got double streaked out. He's feeling pretty comfortable. You got an 80 point lead and you even have the back spawns. Painter can find one, but it looks like Aspire is going to be able to come out on top of the 50-50 and Super is able to come through and clean it out. And just uh, another name that, you know, maybe you don't recognize, but he was another guy at Champs last year, had a halfway decent placing, cracked into the top 16. So some of these names are maybe more recent to the scene, but might be guys you see a little bit more and more as far as, you know, the future goes. I think that we saw, I mean, who's Pander was on, I believe it was Pittsburgh Knights. At yes, the he was on the Pittsburgh Knights. Yeah, yes. like these guys are top amateur players consistently, and they just need to do that little bit extra to crack in, like, into that scope where every one of you guys at home knows them as household names. They're all really good players, though. I mean, this is what Stamino has been at a handful of champs now, World War II and IW. This is at least his third, if not his fourth. I, I mean, Tish has been a guy that's being talked of quite a bit by, we've heard his name on the, the Crowder podcast. It's just, it, this literally is a lobby full of a bunch of the top AMs that have been working their way through the open bracket or at times already have. And just can they finally take that next step and see how far into the, the bracket play they can go. And champs is certainly the place uh pack if you want to start to become a household name making place here oh yeah you can become champs is certainly the place you can become instantly famous yes. if you do well at champs in the scene so if there's ever an opportunity it is these few days here at the poly pavilion and both it works both ways too you can become instantly famous or you can that go the, the end opposite of your career. <laughs> hurt you massively <laughs> All right, well, if you want to continue watching Aspire and Hybrid, you can do so on Charlie. But now, going to swing back over to Splice and Heretics. See if we can get a little more life out of Heretics here in the S in D. Because Splice looking very, very strong when they took that first part. Well, game two. And she said, Katie, Splice dominated game one. And I mean, the storyline, Chance, you talked about it. Pac mentioned it too. For Heretics, since this team change has come through, it's not really been great, has it? Uh, didn't win a series coming here. I mean, you look at what the Heretics specifically was able to do throughout the year. I mean, it was uh, it was impressive, right? Consistent improvement. They were a team which really were improving every event you saw them play. And once it was the latter part of the year, it's been a, a bit of a fall off, to be honest. And these were improvements that have been being made for more than a year, like a year and a half at work. They've been teaming together for such a long time. And I'll be honest, when I saw them make the roster change, it pulled a little bit of the Vamos out of my heart. It did. It, it no, it really did. Just a it little really bit, because like, there were moves they could have made, and I would have been like, all right, that's fine. I completely understand that. I like it. But then the move they had, in my mind, it just never made sense. It didn't seem to click. I don't understand the explanation. And obviously, the language barrier doesn't make that any easier. But <laughs> since they made the change, again, one in six in series count. The only team they've beaten wasn't a pro league team. It, it's been a struggle. So of course, they can quell all of that hate with a big win over Spice, making bracket play, going on another run. But this is a team this year, you kind of hinted at it earlier, was always in that top eight range. And to fall flat right at the very end be a tragedy sure but of course a loss here doesn't necessarily mean heretics are out this makes a uh, journey a little a little more interesting and it definitely pulls like a little bit of a, any stock i would have had i just lose a little bit more every single series that they play where they don't find success yeah it's, it's tough although you know we mentioned the stat of being what was it oh and six i think it was heading into champs i think Correct. six series but the teams they played admittedly were Great. I think the only one you look at that wasn't a, a fantastic team was Midnight. Yeah, they played Luminosity, Optic, Gen.G, Spice, Reciprocity, and Midnight. So it's literally take your yeah. pick from a top six team. And then even Midnight, that was when they were looking pretty good. So they did not get an easy road ahead of them. But even still, the old Heretics, you line them up against those teams, they have at least a moderate amount of success. Yep. And at least so far for this team, it's been a little bit different. It was a time to get the ball rolling. Going to be clicking, firing all cylinders. It would be here at Champs. However, another slow start and a map for Heretics. They found themselves two rounds down to Splice. Also down here in the third, first blood came through for Temp. Yeah, it was a very nice first blood as well because Hook was in a, a very delicate balance just with the Sog on the other side of the doorway. Two players staring him down, but use the stun, use the nade, and make sure you find a pick. 
Now, of course, three Heretics players, I think they're just waiting for Hook to get over aggressive. I was going to say, they knew that he was there or at least around, and it's Wartex that's the man sent in to clean out Hook just to even up the odds. Now, of course, that bomb leaning towards the B site, but Looney's here waiting for him. Lucky close. But doesn't connect with the pick. 20 seconds. Your splice. You know, Heretics are dedicated now themselves to the B site. Nades out. Lucky should be able to find one. Doesn't actually, though. Metals flies forward. He shuts down Temp. It's a 3v2 advantage Heretics. But again, Splice know they're on the bomb. There's a big flank coming through, though, from number four. That's going to be Waltex, who now actually finds himself in a 1v2. Should make it a 1v1. Can he find the last kill? No, he can't. Splice, 3 0 up. And that's actually very surprising as well, because I think it was Aqua, the man with the SOGs, running up through the tunnels, but he didn't have dead silence. So I thought there was a moment where the guy on bomb might have been able to hear him, but. All's well that ends well. Splice, they definitely let the round get a little bit dicey, but get the clutch towards the end, and Looney obviously a, a big part of that. Honestly, the best play was him just staying alive at the very end. Sure it was. He knows he doesn't have to challenge anything. Watch your corners. Win the round. Smart bet play coming out of Looney. And, of course, for Spice, another round win. This is a, a good series for them. Just a... Put themselves at potentially 2-0 up in the pools. With how some of the other teams have struggled and some of the series that the other teams have had to play, you'll, you'll take these 3-0s. You'll definitely take them. I was going to say, that's just a, it's a nice just to get the ball rolling, especially Splice. I mean, it's kind of, uh, again, Pac-Man mentioned, like one of the most difficult teams to predict because yeah, before they made their roster change, they were a fantastic team getting some, you know, top three, top two placements, and then they get rid of accuracy, which everyone... Or maybe not everyone, but a lot of people were like, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Why do you make the roster change until we see they picked up Hook? And then it was like, okay, we'll actually, we'll take a second to see how this works out. But it didn't. We have not, we haven't seen their final form, though. I, I think it's fair to say. But I think the scary part is the question, will we see their final form? How long is it going to take for them to even find their final form? Have they even done it yet? And that's the question. So far, their champs has been stress-free. Others. Getting the job done, which is the main point. It's a 4v4 here in round four. One planted, but instantly, Looney will fall. Advantage Heretics numerically. They still have to defuse the bomb with 35 seconds to go. Tempting about maybe hitting a late flank and, well, can't wait too long. Now you're in a 1v4. That should be the end of this. Should be. Method 6 finds the pick. Heretics got their first round win. And that's a very nice round for Heretics to get because Splice misplayed it just a little bit. Looney, after he got the bomb plant, was 75 off of streaks, but it's a SOG that just kind of walked in and shut him down. So it's not like he was getting wall banged off site from the God Spot by an ICR. It's someone just kind of waltzed in and Shut the up. angle wasn't perfect are. enough for the bomb planter. So Heretics can breathe a, a big sigh of relief. No streaks from Looney that you don't have to worry about. The, the lightning strike ping for the information or whatever it may be, and you're not down 4-0. The second Helps. part's probably next. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Helps, right? Got your first round win on the board. Always a good feeling. Spice still with the advantage, though. On a sizable one, three to one. Heretics coming over towards the attacking side. Look at the, the stats at the top of your screen. Metals and Lucky, both one and three. Journey, 0-4 start for him. On the flip side, it's Jerd with a slow start, one and two. But really, it's trying to see if Journey can get off the mark here, find his first kill. Maybe in this round five. And ticking. Heretics really with no control of the site, and Jerd wants to push forward. Yeah, he's pouring the pressure on Aqua, by the way, with the KN, but Jerd trying to do the delicate dance. He got a little bit over aggressive, him and Hoop trying to make a play, and it was four members of Heretics. And eventually, even the fifth showed up as well, just to hunt down that one player. So the passive play from Heretics, it pays off for the first blood. You got to get the conversion, though, and they're spreading themselves a little bit thin, but Looney, nice and aggressive, can only find none as he gets shut down, and Aqua finds the same fate. Heretics, a very solid round so far. Temp and Hook still up, though. That duo. Journey will spread through the first and the assist on the second. The Spaniards fight back. 
And again, all, all that just comes down to they were just waiting for Spice to make a mistake and get over aggressive. And I have to imagine that's going to be prep work as well. Because keep in mind, we saw it like two rounds ago where Hook was just sitting on the steps waiting for someone for Heretics to jump over. And Heretics had three guys that were just waiting for Hook to make the play because they're expecting that aggression to come in eventually. Of course, that round, they just go and kill Hook and single him out. But this time, again, just waiting back for the aggression. Heretics obviously aware of the play style of Spice. The question is for Spice, can they switch things up, show them a different look, don't feed into their hand. And six underway, Heretics win two on the bounce. And they tie it up. Spice, of course, on the attack, and while they have full, full control of B, Bum will go down. Now you're looking at Heretics for the five-man retake. Five men retake and keep in mind, Temp is in the back deep, watching the full flank and Lucky effectively walks straight into him. The Sog maybe not the greatest, but now the nade's doing damage and the nade finishes the job. Hook up top, the concussion actually doesn't hit the player in the front, so he gets hunted, but the flank has been dealt with. Temp has been the clearance man and it makes the job for his team much that much easier. <laughs> That's just so annoying. If you're a heretic, you're asking why is Temp so far at the back of the map there? Well, not over yet, though. Still a three versus two, 12 seconds. They need to find the kills quickly. Not going to be able to do so, and that's probably just uh, make your way towards the back of the map. Stay alive. Journey is just 425 off streak, so probably won't jump off just yet. Bomb will detonate. Spice go up 4-2. And I do think that that's another round where that just comes down to preparation from the teams. I would have to imagine Spice have done their research and they're like, hey, when we're on uh, offense, if we go towards the B site, they will send someone on the flank, not the half flank, come through mid cut, the but stuff. all the way around. Because Temp is in the back with a SOG watching it. That man, he knows what uh, heretics are going to bring to the table. So both teams put the time in just to make sure they find success in the group stages. There's two kills for him that round. And as soon as he deals with both of them, he knows that's probably it. The rest of the pressure probably coming from the front side. And Spice put themselves two rounds away now from going 2-0 up in this series. Big win for them. Confidence boost as well, if nothing else. Where other teams have faulted, Spice have stayed consistent. As Temp watches outskirts. Tracks back and over towards A. He peaks bump. Did he see him? Yes, he did. Drops down, but he has a couple of fights to take. And unfortunately for Temp, he was a little too weak. Metals will find the pick, but in come the splice reinforcements flying through the tunnel. So they all will fall. Looney for the 1v4. And Looney's done this before. He's done it on payload as well. He's made big plays, but this seems like it's even more difficult than before. Players on head glitches all over the place. He gets hunted, he gets caught. And that decision making from Splice. It's just not there, right? At the start, it's Temp. He sees the guy on bomb, knows he has the kill, gets baited into just debating on killing that second guy first. Split second decision costed him. And then you had everybody for the side of Spice. They were just flying out mid tunnel. They all just got trapped in a corner and picked apart one by one. So the hesitation, hesitation kills you. Sure does. Sure does. Artix again, keeping it close here. An important map for them to tie this up. Give them some life in the series. 250 off streaks is Metals. Keep your eye on him, on his POV for now. Is he going to have any action? Well, it's number 10, Aqua. From Splice, who plays over towards the B side. He just has a, a quick little peek, doesn't see anything. Packs away. Play in charge of just watching the push through from B. Metals with no intent of doing that just yet. Of course, the fight should come over towards A, and for me, it's just how quickly is that number two on the minimap, Metals, going to push that connector, see if he can cherry pick a kill or two. Well, Jurd gets that first blood, and surprisingly, Heretic seems very content to give up a side control for free. This is a couple rounds they've done it last time. Spice maybe got a little bit over aggressive, trying to hunt the players for Heretics down instead of watching the bomb planner. This time, they get it down for free. They get the setup that they want. Yes, if you give Spice a first blood on free side, they're going to plan. Simple as that. This time, Aqua on flank does fall, so it is a 4v4. As they play for the information on Splice Post Plant, they know there's going to be two in the other room up top. Metal's weak, but still alive. Metal tries to fly through. Two plays in front of him, he gets none of them. Splice win the round.
One more and they get 2 0 up. And Spice, honestly, it looks like they're playing a little bit panicky. You got yeah. players that don't need to slide back and forth that are getting a little bit caught out. But in the end, you give them the bomb plan for free. They basically get the, the setup that they want to have rocking with. One player plays outskirts, two stack up around window. And even if the players get a little bit fidgety, still, there's only time, like so much time on the clock. Heretics are forced to just fly forward. And they're very difficult gunfights to win. And Again, I think Spice, honestly, if they're just a little bit more patient, they'll have even more success, right? Like even Aqua yeah. watching the flank, if he just sits back for an extra three or four seconds, then he gets the first blood and the round is even more free than it already was. Heretics back on the attack. They've been a little over passive from what we've seen so far. Giving away a lot for free. Now they're just waiting for that first blood to come through. And well, Spice will say, if you want to be patient, I'm going to be patient too. Apple goes for the jiggle, backs away, doesn't need to overcommit here. Looking for their second map win. Spice very happy to go up 2 0 in the series if they can make the conversion. But the bomb for Heretics. Well, it's getting wrapped over towards B. Looney's going to be able to at least call out that information. They're happy to give away the bomb plane. They're trusting their retake, and they got top heaven control. Jerd is nearby with the SOG, and they even have another ICR that's down lower. It's feasible, but Heretics, they have a very wide map spread. Method Sick might be able to make the play. Shot one player in the back. Now Hook's got to turn around, and yes, Hook trades this kill, but he's getting hunted. Heretics have almost left the bomb in effect, but 28 seconds on the clock. Honestly, the fact Hook was able to take down two was big, but unfortunately for Jared, he's left out in the open. Attempt for the 1v3, he will fall. Heretics again stay alive here in game two. And it's just the errant man on the map. The, the guy that's playing on an island by himself for both sides that have either been the success for the team or the failure, right? Like Aqua gives it up for a moment. That's the only reason that round got problematic. What happened when the full flank came in early before? Well, Temp finds two when Lucky's trying to go all the way around. Makes it easy for Splice. This time it's Method Sick. That's the one that's all the way around back in a position that Splice is just not prepared for. And then they just they, they open up the round for the team. The Heretics, they need two more in a row to tie up the series. Splice on the attack. Been interesting defensive rounds from Heretics where they've previously given up A completely this round. Not going to be the same. They play A hard and fast. Will they find an opening pick, though? Your Splice if they are, and we don't have control. We might just want to wrap to B, and that was what Temp was thinking about, but Hook has just roamed freely around the A site, apparently. He's got himself a first blood against Lucky. Metals is now tagged up. Temp has wrapped back over towards his teammate. Splice in a potential opportunity here to try and put that bomb down. God, the way Heretics have played around this oh, A-side right. on yeah. defense is just, it's very confusing to me. They give up a weird amount of control and just players getting shot in the back for free. And now that turns into the bomb going down at B, a man advantage for Splice. And with the amount of control they have watching the back, you have to imagine they're good for the round win. Temps also got out. Have to find the bomb. And well, they know Method Sick is isolated. They'll challenge him and they'll win the fight. 4v3. Attack five used by Wartex has to invest it here. Is the extra health going to be enough to see them win the round? Well, they do shut down Jer, three versus three, but Temp has collapsed in on the final two players. Medals for the 1v3. Makes it interesting, but with 17 seconds left and needing to defuse the bomb, if you're Looney, who's already been in this situation before, you put yourself up top, you stay alive. Nothing else needs to be done. Splice will go up 2-0 now in the series. 2-0 up and fairly comfortable ones at that, it certainly seemed. Again, just a, a handful of weird plays coming on the payload for Heretics, weird setups. Really like, even in that final round, they spent 20 seconds on the wrong side of the map just trying to hunt these players on Splice down. But Splice doesn't care. They'll take those two maps. And there we have it once again. Splice taking down Heretics one more map away from getting that 3-0. Of course, Optic, Aspire, and EG also winning their series. But coming back, more Call of Duty in just a few minutes. Duty World League is brought to you by Astro Gaming, the official headset and mix amp of the CWL.
Vice just one map away from 3 0 Heretics and securing their second win overall here at CWL Champs. I'm your host, Katie Bedford, joined on the desk by Ben Chance and Pac Man. And again, still looking for a little bit more from Heretics, a little, a little bit more life, a little bit more of a challenge for Splice, but also on the same side of the coin for Splice, like, yes, you're bringing it to Heretics, but can you do that for some of the top teams as you continue on here? And we'll have to find out, but right now they've got to get through this third map first. I think my fear for Heretics is what more do they have to show us? Yeah. Right? Realistically. This it, might be it. At the start of the year, we were really impressed with how much they improved consistently every single event. It was all right, we're pushing the boundaries of what we can achieve. Coming into champs, I don't know if they can achieve much more. I, I personally never agreed with the, the team change in the first place. I think there was a whole host of different things they could have done, and they picked probably the, the wrong thing in my mind. Coming into champs, I think that's proven just statistically speaking that they hadn't won a series. They were 0 6. Their first series win comes against, I think it was the fourth seed in the pool. So it's not anything that you can sing and shout about and get all excited if you're, you know, a Heretics fan. I'm, I'm sorry to say, it's just not looking good. They'll probably qualify for bracket play. I, I think that's realistic, but. After that, what's their limit? At the same time, though, I want to see the bracket. I don't want to make judgments on any teams until fair. I see that bracket. Because, like, so EG last year, oh, I'd have never said they were going to win champs until I saw that bracket, oh. and I was like, a run can Fair enough, there. but that team also got second place earlier in that season. Right. With the same roster. Oh, I'm not saying it's the exact same I, for Heretics, but I'm saying I don't think it's all dismal yet. I, I get what you're saying. You can maybe push the top six, maybe a, a top There's six. hope to be the, found. The sun is over the horizon, Ben. And, I mean, and they haven't lost yet. We saw UIU bring it back to the brink. That is very true. A similar situation. I, like works. See... I love your optimism today, Pac. I love yeah, it. I'm a positive guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see if that positivity can help out Heretics here. Because, again, they're going to have to do something on this third map or the series will be over rather quickly. Sure will. Splice looking good. Controlling the series from the first two maps. And, well, can they close it out in three or... Oh, we see another respawn, another hard point coming through. We'll wait and see. And Heretics just made the, the hardest read of all time. They quadruple stacked over towards B, but obviously nobody's home. But no love lost. This is a, a typical start to a round, this time just a little bit faster than usual. So Heretics, well, just trying to set up the spawn trap. And at the start of the day, I mentioned, uh, obviously, whoever wins this could potentially take the number one seed, dependent on what happens elsewhere. That was obviously uh, Aspire versus Hybrid. Well, Aspire did beat Hybrid. So that basically means whoever wins this will take the number one seed in the group. Splice a map away from doing that. Could be uh, big for them and also important for the bracket too. Might just be Splice taking care of business. Come in, get some very quick wins out of the way. Save all your energy for the, the nitty gritty of the bracket tournament. But obviously oh, yeah. not quite there yet. Still not need to make sure you get this win, but have a, a very solid life advantage. They're five up on the take. There's number six. You get plenty of bodies over towards the B point. You got Huke spawn killing over from post and you got all the ICRs in the world in the back on B. Now you got Looney potentially going to get some streaks as well. I think that's what he's keeping in the back of his mind. Seeing if he can find him, let his teammates do some of the work, but get shut down by Method Sick. Talk about a big kill on the map. And honestly, that massive life advantage that Splice had, that's been reduced relatively quickly, just 22 to 19, but two ticks into B. With a minute and a half to push through. The streaks would have been lovely. Heretics deny Looney that. Now, though, can they hold true? Can they park the bus? and defend for a minute 20. And splice, fly, straight forward. Big win from Lucky at the back, but he knows the pressure's now gonna come from the front. Well, right now, Hook is just trying to do his best job of staying alive. That's a great start, too. It takes down Vortex. As long as he is here, Heretics have a lot of things that they're gonna have to deal with, but Lucky eventually is able to take him down. You get the thorn out of your side, but to the same point, though, still a four-life lead for Splice. They just need to play the trade game, because 52 seconds is it's not a ton of time, but it's a decent little bit. Nice pick from Looney. He's going to open up a push down B Street. He's able to find a wide angle over towards Sushi. Meanwhile, Jared continuously trying to hit the flank. Doesn't work out this time. The life lead just at two. It was looking like a horrible start for Heretics, but they've done their best. And they're about 30 seconds away now from winning this round. And now Hook's trying to run away. You got Jared doing a, a three-foot-long grapple. 
a, a couple bad plays coming out. And I talked about 52 seconds being a decent bit of time. 22 is a lot less. You're going to have to start flooding towards this hill. And Metals is just sitting here waiting for you. You fly out past him. It's free gunfights. You can see the help he's got in coming from the top. But Aqua's actually able to find the two entry kills. And Jert on the flank is able to find one. Vortex is by himself. He finds two. You can cap this last tick very quickly if you just body stack. And that's what Splice are doing. This opened up thanks to Aqua and a double kill. It's 7-7 in lives, just 12.5 seconds on the clock. As it stands, contested. So time won't go down. Looney tries to fly in. He actually got two there. Somehow, some way. It's a five versus three. No spawns left for either side. Vortex will fall and Splice will win the round. It wasn't pretty. It wasn't dominant but they get the job done. That's a very big round as well. I mean, in my mind, they probably should have won it a lot quicker, right? You had Looney 75 off the yeah. streaks, haps, or hops out of the hill, and maybe a, a bit of a squandered opportunity, but for Spice, you get the win in the end, and for Heretics, at the very least, you don't have to deal with any score streaks that would have made the run even more difficult. As you look at the best play, it was who can post. I saw how annoying he was being. This gave Heretics very hard time indeed. Splice with the advantage though, here in game three. We'll see if they can continue any destruction on gridlock. I think Splice, at least towards the start of the year, was one of the teams that figured out the map the fastest. They were one of the first teams to really set up some decent spawn kills, and now maybe even more so than the spawns, Aqua is thinking about some score streaks as well. 250 off and an ICR on gridlock, especially over towards B. This is his wheelhouse. You, you talk about research as well, right, in the search. Look at that for a good counter on your first defensive round. They know Harry Six is gonna come B. They body stack it heavily. Temp was the only one over towards A, and that is perfect control. And Heretics just took about 30 seconds to make that happen. Now you just get completely slayed out. So now there's actually a ton of pressure to even be able to cap the A point, right? Like Splice does have two players nearby. Hook is going to be very quick on the flank, and you don't want to afford especially not losing round without capping A. If that ever happens on Gridlock, that is a massive failure. Comes through. You called it. There's one. That was for streaks. Won't come through, but Temp, more importantly, trying to defend the A zone. The kills for Heretics are there. A ton of time managed to take off the clock. Aqua's still looking for some kills, 125 away from Streaks himself. And of course, the biggest reason why the offensive team needs to make sure that at the very least they cap A it just helps with like the specialist progression, right? It gives you quite a few extra points, gets you a little bit closer. So it's nice for Heretics. They at least get that on board, but still down by five lives. And I talked about Splice being good at the spawn traps. This is what Hook is looking for. The stun might be able to force him to back down, but he's got Looney as the, the supporting man. I was going to say you can force Hook out of position, but Looney's there as well. You expect to see Harris push through the front. And even if they do that, this play is ready and waiting. Temp is deep in the splice spawn, waiting for the push through to come through. So you have essentially a couple of 2v2s, if not maybe even a 2v3 there at the back of the map for splice. Lucky does eventually hunt down Hook. Looney will also drop. But Heretics don't have too much time. They've got a lot of time off the, the start of the clock. They don't have any progression in, and they have 60 seconds. They've also got two men that were just able to full flank for free. I think Aqua finally turned around, or actually had his teammate. So Aqua only able to get the lightning. He played for that the entire round, and then the flank just got left open. So now Heretics, they have clearance on the front of the hill, and Hoop feels the pressure. It's a lightning strike called in from the teammate. It's the Tempest called in from him just to slow Heretics down, and they are successful with that. So. Uh, a thankful moment that at least he was able to get that lightning because that round could have gotten out of hand quick. Worthwhile investment. Hoop pop Tempest. The streak comes through. You save the day defensively at least. And Hook isn't done just yet. Snapping with the Tempest. Two kills. Of course, now that life lead 18 to 11. 30 seconds on the clock. And well, Heretics really need Lucky to make the play. He's highlighted on the minimap number nine. He has support coming in the form of Metals, but he falls. So does Method 6. Vortex drops as well. Splice note, this round is over. Yeah, this has been as dominant as you could possibly ask for two rounds, and especially with that time being off the clock. Think about how much time Heretics was spending trying to set up different pushes, this and that, and they've been getting flanked like crazy. That's what Jerd's going to set up for. You got to deal with the double ICR setup coming out from Looney and Aqua, and well, you can see at least a, a little bit of success that they are having, and if not the ICRs on the front, it is Jerd in the back on the flank that is still just so problematic for him. Journey has to know Jerd's there. You can't peek out. Yes, you're trying to play for the kill in front of you, but you can't just randomly fall. Knowing that Spice are going to be there, you're already down to your final few lives. 
in that situation, you got to play it a little wiser to your surroundings. Either way, Splice win the round 2 Oh, And yeah, good research from them, in my opinion. Again, you mentioned it in the search. I mentioned it in the control. The way they started that round disciplined. They didn't fall for any bait. They stayed defensive at B. A lot of time bled off the clock. Too much time bled off the clock. And honestly, I think there's no reason not to play that way from the side of Splice, right? It's every single round we see on Gridlock, 90% of them. Eventually, the A point gets capped. So yep. why would you not send at least two or three players over to B just in case that they, they, they throw a five-man strat, especially when you're close to streak? So I, I don't think it's an incredibly impressive call coming in from a Splice. I think it's just a necessary one. And you can see Heretics, the exact same thing. You don't want craziness to happen over towards B. You make sure you stack it. Heretics, they got four bodies nearby. Well, stack it, yeah, but are you even going to win the fights? Trade comes through. Graf Slam is available for metals should he want to use it. He doesn't have to invest it yet. Much better from Heretics. The five-man wipe. Now the question is, will Splice want to rotate this, or are they still going to try and push over towards B? Well, surprisingly, they're just going to keep flooding forward, right? And you got to be a little bit nervous, because Journey, only 275 off. He's got an ICR. He's in a great spot. And Splice, yeah, they're just trying to make plays, but they're getting cut down just a little bit. Heretic's very strong on the defensive hold this time. I mean, Ten man, so he just tracked back over towards A. He wanted to. Instead, it looks like he's actually going to set up a full flank. He's trying to make sure no one else pushes through. His teammates will scramble back to A. Nice win from Temp. Earns his war machine from that as well. A lot of time has been taken away here. A is being capped up. This is where if you're spliced, really, you, you still want to apply pressure towards B. They got pressure all over the map, right? I think the players mid-map are causing problems, but of course that means flanks are actually coming in. Jerd and Aqua are going to turn, but maybe a little bit too late because now Lucky's actually in the back causing problems. Hook is looking for him, can't find him. And Spice, on him, just unaware. They're trying to find Lucky, and finally Hook is able to shut him down. And the second tick of progression over towards A. Heretics, again, they just need to be annoying. They need to make sure that they keep a little bit of map pressure over towards house and keep that life lead. Jenny can get streaks too. That'd be wonderful. Needs one more kill. 75 points away. Of course, Spice. No progression to be just yet. Minute 22, but the reinforcements are coming. Journey's going to have to back away. Now that zone's contested, you know there's a Spice player somewhere. Earns the lightning. Very well played from him. Won't get the Hellstorm, though. More importantly, his teammates still winning the fights. Well, Aqua in the back again. Heretics maybe just a little bit caught off guard, but eventually those two players are able to shut him down. So Spice is always trying to keep someone the thorn in their side over towards post. Slam. And now he's got the slam up front. He's only able to take down one. Lucky with the War Machine is able to shut him down thereafter, but it's going to take a lot of utility from Heretics. The Lightning Strike gets called in as well, just to slow Spice down. Shot punch just enough to deny medals of his grass Slam, so 50% progression for him. Five life lead though for Heretics. 40 seconds on the clock and still no progression at all from Spice. No progression at all and Spice again. It's just when Heretics has all that map pressure up towards house, you gotta find another avenue to work with. So they're trying to go through mid, but Journey's been here, wins a, a pretty big gunfight for the first one. And it looks like Journey knows that who gotta pass them with the, the grapple, so. He's a little bit worried about Spice coming in the back, but at the same time, 17 seconds on the clock. Spice has to go fast. Uh, that's well played as well from Ethisic. Just a guarantee he gets himself at least one kill. The flank's coming through over in post. Wartex sword. I think two players actually cross into that. It's three overall. Metals deals with Looney, so with five seconds left, they have Spice absolutely pinned. This has been a wonderful round out of Heretics, especially towards the end. They win a round. Still, though, Splice. One more is all they need. And the good news for Spice is you at least get that lightning strike burned. You get the war machine out of the way. But it's honestly a fairly even trade just because you're using the, the grab slam. So nice little bounce back round for Heretics. And I think from either team on offense, just go to A first. Just, just go to A first. Both teams are happy yeah. to at least triple, if not quad stack the B site. Just go to A, get it out of the way, get some bonus points to work for score streaks, specialist progression, whatever it might be. But just go for the, the standard plays. They're going to completely ignore everything you just Well, said. that's because they're using the Vision Pulse. Journey popped out at the start of the round, so this might actually be an even better play than what I was thinking to get B first with the Vision, but you got to make sure you get the kills. Wars out. Flanks coming in as well. Look, you should be able to find two, maybe even three, or there's a War Machine to the face, so never mind. It's the first tick in B through. No, it's not. So the decap will come through. Now, Counter Vision. 
Aqua pop stat. They know they have everyone a day, and they can afford to fight this because of vision pulls. And they got to make sure they get the kills, though. You don't want to waste the VP, but the nade takes down Hook, so it might be a pulse from either side that basically gets both teams nothing. Spice, they're trying to fight as hard as they can, and you know, team kill might help them out a little bit, but, I mean, Heretics, again, they got battered up at the very start of the round, and just like that, they're right back in the swing of things. Definitely not the best vision pulls from the Legacy. But a three life advantage. First splice, two minutes ten on the clock. No progression to be. Heretics, of course, attacking. Journey with a nice double. And that should at least let Heretics get out of their spawn. Maybe just for a moment, again, the house control. Who can tap revenge? Just going crazy in this area. And yes, Temp dies, but uh, it's another team kill from the side of Heretics that comes in. Hook again, the annoying man on the map. The beat down on the next guy, Heretics. They're just going hunting and they can't even find him. Eventually, he gets shut down, but then Temp is right back in the spot, right back to being annoying. And you have to check that. Double for him. Metals and Lucky both fall. Spice have developed a five life advantage now. With a minute 25 to go. Honestly, it looks like this is going to be uh, coming down to lives. Uh, not even necessarily time. Spice have played it very well indeed. The Heretics, they just have to clear out their base. Spice has just been so annoying. This is Aqua taking his turn. It has been seemingly every player at one point or another causes problems. Luckily for Heretics, Aqua's only able to take one, but then Jurd is now the annoying man behind enemy lines. Heretics have had to take every single fight while getting shot in the back. They have never cleared out their spawn appropriately. And just look at how annoying Jurd's being. He just draw four players back. Now the time is ticking down, and Temp is still the next guy up in the face of the Spanish. It's just burning time if nothing else as well. Of course, Splice win this. They qualify for groups. I'll take the number one seed and Mull Heretics are down to their final four lives with 30 seconds left. They need to clear out up close and nice to kill a couple more players from Splice off spawn. Doesn't look like it's going to be possible. Journey shuts down Temp. Vortex does find Jared though, so it's a 3v8 for now. Hook ready and waiting for the Spanish push. If it even gets there, that is, because Looney's pushed up. He's putting down so much damage. The kills come through. Splice get the win. Splice qualify for bracket play. They take the number one seed in the group. They do indeed. Following behind the likes of 100 Thieves, Evil Geniuses, and Optic today, who will also all be continuing onward. You can see smiles there from Aqua. Happy to get that 3-0 over Heretics. Happy to be able to close that out. Heretics. We'll see what happens with them. Not know. done yet, but we'll see. They are 1-1 one, one now, series-wise. Not done yet, but again, that's a team that, like, I feel like we've just lost a ton of faith in over yeah. the past couple months. So yeah. they got a, a long road ahead of them. And then for the side of Spice, just business as usual. Maybe the nice little start to the tournament they needed. Let's look now at our groups. See how things are starting to shake out. You can see they're United, E6, Envy, and FaZe all on top in the first four sets at two apiece. However, units as well, two apiece in Group C. So we'll see what happens with those two. But E through H, Singularity on top in E. Undefeated as of yet. Let drop the map, yeah. They're Spice, and honestly, Heretics Aspire later is another one of those games where it's just up to you two teams, no other. They're the best ones, Those are the best ones. Just come out and win those games. If you're Aspire, you're in a spot where you have a pretty good pro team to go against at this point, to be honest to get a spot in bracket play. Yeah, and even the differences in map count between Evil Geniuses and Optic, EG has one more. It's doing like one map difference better than Evil Geniuses is, so they're, so Optic's still in second, but like, well, they play each other. how will that they shake out? Yeah, other. exactly. How will that map count change and see who gets first seed in that moving forward? But we'll have to find out because there's still many, many, many more series to be played. Unfortunately, Heretic's not able to get a map off of Splice falling 3-0. But again, they are not out of it. They may still qualify. We'll have to see when we come back at CWL Champs. What?